Hello, my friends. Jacob is here once again. Happy Tuesday to you. Thank you for pressing play and for joining me for what is sure to be an awesome episode of me, I guess. Thanks for subscribing and sharing and all that stuff. What am I doing? Why am I doing? What is it? What, 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 it's Tuesday. What, what, Jacob, what are you doing in the back alley? What's, what's the back alley show today, Jacob, right? Okay, well, I'm going to explain. I want to say sorry to some of you because I know a lot of you were looking forward to the... Uh, the parable of the 10 virgins uh, video and I'm working on it I'm working on it really hard and I got to tell you something you're going to love it and it is going to be eye-opening indeed but something happened last night and it sent me down a little path a little journey on a topic that I think everybody needs to uh, uh, address and I'm, I'm gonna be releasing that video I'm working on it right now but I know you're used to Tuesdays. I know you're used to me coming out here on Tuesdays, like uh, around uh, by 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time in the morning. I try to get something to you so you don't have to wait too long. I didn't want you all to uh, be sitting around going, what's going on? What's going on? Where's the show, Jacob? You promised a show and nothing. So as I was having lunch and I was working on the video for, um, you know, for today, but tonight, tomorrow, probably now that I'm giving you this, uh, I read an article, an interesting one from The Hill. Uh, you probably saw the thumbnail. Right? I was going to title this video, The Loose Generation. But really, it's the I don't care anymore generation. Nothing matters anymore generation. Morality is gone generation. It's all about ambivalence, which means it's like, oh, who cares, right? It's all about self-indulgence. It's all about feeling good. It's all about conquest, right? It's like the spring break. The world has become uh, not the place that I uh, want it to be not the place that I'm trying to create for my my children, which by the way, I have many. Uh, I have a 17 year old, a 16 year old boy, and a 14 year old girl, and of course my, uh, my, my awesome Ethan, who you all know, my six year old. But you know, I talk to my teenagers, I talk to Noah, Anthony, and Shiloh about dating, and you know, I talk to my son especially um, about being a man, and what it means to be a man. And sadly today, what it means to be a man is it's all about, you know, how big and strong you are, and how many, you know, women you can sleep with. That's what most young men think. Uh, or how many likes you get on Twitter, or how many retweets. I don't even know, because I just started with the Twitter. By the way, if you want, you know, be a friend with me on Twitter. I'll share stuff here and there. I don't know. I'm learning. I'm learning more about the social media. I know this is a generation that is very different from uh, my generation and, and generations uh, before me. And it was done on purpose, okay? It was done on purpose. You know, there's a reason why we're working on Sundays now. It's a reason why you see divorce is so encouraged and so many families are broken up. It's because if you have a strong family unit and then you're gonna raise children that are secure and intelligent and they question and they don't just listen and go along with the crowd. But see, the problem is when you have a broken family and you bombard people with the uh, the me, me, me mentality and just try to feel good mentality and nothing means nothing mentality, you're not gonna have a bunch of people that are gonna be very difficult to uh, herd together and uh, control. Because that's what we are, commodities, right? We are a bunch of slaves and we allow this system to completely control us and we allow the system to demoralize our children to the point where, which brings me to today's video, I'm reading an article today um, from thehill.com where it says, I mean, the title alone should, uh, should get some people thinking. The title alone says, evangelicals sell their soul for Trump. All right? It's like crazy, huh? <laughs> I would get... I would get some evangelicals upset because here you're talking about their faith and you're saying that they're giving up on their faith to support Donald Trump. And why? So I go on to read. Well, this opinion contributor said because of the Stormy Daniels affair that he had, the porn star. That he had sex with after he was married. That he committed adultery with and paid off so that uh, nobody would know. You know. Nobody would know. Not that it mattered. Because, and listen, I want to be very clear, by the way, I 
don't believe in the system. I don't know how many times I can tell you this, that I'm not a Trump supporter and I'm not a Trump hater. It's all a bunch of nonsense. It's all a big show. And I know a lot of you want to believe that, uh, you know, our commander in chief is, is out for us all. And I hope that is true. But experience has dictated to me that those with power and money and control only care about themselves and those with power, money and control. So when the evangelical said that uh, President Donald Trump gets a mulligan for committing adultery with a porn star and others, because uh, many reports are that he's, you know, he's been a serial, whatever. I don't, you know, listen, it's. He's the president of the United States. He's the commander in chief. He is the head honcho. He's a man that dictates the morality of our country, spiritually speaking, the man who's in control, right? That's the representation of all of us. So when you have this evangelical leader saying that President Trump gets a uh, mulligan for Stormy Daniels, as long as, you know, he, uh, he takes care of all the other stuff that we want done. It's just great hypocrisy. And it is really so, so very sad because adultery is wrong, you know? When you commit to somebody, when you give them your heart, and you, want, you should do unto them as you want done unto yourself. And see, the problem is people with money and power, they're only about feeding their own ego and their own self-interest and what they want. See, that's not, that's not a good recipe for um, a beautiful future. And when I talk to my children, like when I talked about, to Noah about how when you're dating somebody, you go to the door, you introduce yourself, you say, my name is Noah. Um, it's very nice to meet you, sir or ma'am. And you shake their hand and you say, I'm going to be with your daughter tonight. This is where we're going and I'll be back at this time. You don't haunt the horn, right? You, you go to the door because my daughter Shiloh, who I'm, you know, I'm grateful that I, I have children, the ones that I do, and I, I really hope that um, I never fail them as a parent. But I do feel like today um, our children are being failed because of the media and the irresponsible message that they continue to uh, you know, dictate and uh, funnel through uh, social media, through the internet, through TV, through magazines, through it all. It's all about sex, it's all about money, it's all about things. Just watching a, um, a documentary, because I'm trying to understand this generation of, of Tinder, where you just, you know, you just hook up with people. You know? And that's what I, had, I, when I had talked to my children about this, they said, Dad, you know, dating, there's no courting anymore. You don't even, they don't even know what the word court means, right? But the, the, nobody dates anymore, Dad. We just, the people just hook up. And I said, well, I don't want that for you. Meaningful relationships are what matter the most. And you see, if we're conditioned to stay away from meaningful relationships and we're conditioned to just be self-absorbed and narcissistic and, and not caring about who we get involved with and only what we can gain from them, then what happens is it's easier to control us because a strong family unit raises a strong generation of children that can actually change things. And they know that. And that's why today you see this nonsense happening on a regular basis. And uh, this article is true. Let me ask you all a question. Why hasn't the church spoke up, whether you're a Trump supporter or not? Why are the evangelicals or, or leaders of any faith, why are they being quiet on the fact that this man has had relations with, I mean, he's cheated on his wife with porn star and with a Playboy playmate that, that we're aware of. And then there's many, many other women that are accusing him of this, that, and the other thing. I'm not even getting into that, but this is the leader of the United States. This is our president. And these evangelical leaders, what are they doing? Well, you know why? I worked there. Listen, I know. I was the head writer and uh, producer for many years for one of the largest Christian networks in the world. And the reason why I left to come on to all of you is the same reason why Jacob left Laban. <laughs> he wanted the... Uh, he didn't want the uh, the flock that that Laban had. He would, the, Laban was a sheep shearer. The story of Jacob and Laban was his uncle. He went to work for him. He was a shepherd. You know, he fed the flock. He took care of the flock. He nurtured the flock. But he saw the hypocrisy in Laban, and he saw the hypocrisy. Like I see the hypocrisy in the religious system, and uh, and I was very vocal about that too. And so I left 
many of these leaders, you know, they'll condemn one person for this or condemn, and they'll be doing the same thing. Many of these leaders have affairs. Many of these leaders do drugs. Many of these leaders have embezzled and have committed fraud. And these are the representations of God on earth. My people, my friends, it's got to change. And I'm hoping that we can be a part of that change. I'm hoping that you can sit down with your teenagers and talk to them about how amazing it is to actually have an amazing relationship and to love somebody and to be loved in return and to build something together and to have trust and to understand that you're more than a piece of meat. All right, long story short, um, I just wanted to get this out to you because I know a lot of people, um, they, I'm, I'm really appreciative. I'm grateful that you all like hearing from me and I didn't want you all to wait too, too long. Um, it looks like, you know, it's a, when you try to, what I call like live in the spirit, right? When you live in the moment, um, I'm always looking for inspiration. I'm always looking for what I can share with all of you and what I can learn as an individual myself. And uh, it has been in my, um, in my radius, you know, this, this whole Tinder generation, this whole loose generation, this whole lost, I don't care anymore, me, me, me generation. And, um, and it's troubling to me. And so when I saw the article, uh, really, that is a good question. You know, where are the leaders of faith? Why aren't they saying something? You know, you can condemn someone's act, but still applaud them in other areas. And you can talk to them about how, you know, you should say sorry. I'm sorry to my wife. I'm sorry to, you know, the young children that should be looking up to me. I'm sorry for those that I have treated like a, uh, a commodity, like a conquest. We can make a better world, people. And we're going to make a better world. And things are coming. Listen, I've been saying for a long time, corruption was going to be revealed. Scandal was going to be revealed. They said it was going to happen in all areas. Wait till you see this video that I'm working on right now. The video that side railed my uh, 10 virgins video, which will be coming to you probably on Friday or maybe next Tuesday. But this video that I'm working on right now, the one that I'm working on right now, um, that I took a quick break from to come out and talk to all of you, it's going to, it's going to get you all thinking because I'm going to tie some loose ends together and you're going to see how all of this is working together and how, like I said, there are things in the work, people. Don't let, uh, don't let the media fool you. We're really, uh, something's, something's coming down the pipe. In any event, I love each and every one of you. Please do share it around. Subscribe. Tell your friends. Um, and uh, that's it. Be awesome. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.